Kit bashing, not quite the Gumby sketch, it sounds like, is a reoccurring fascination of mine. Call it modification, alteration, the word kit bash reflects an alternative, if you may, to scratch building. Once upon a time, when cars were steam powered and people lived underground so as not to be eaten by giant mammoth moths, scratch building was quite the thing. But at some point, In evolution, hobbyists discovered that one could use the few existing tank and T-Ford model kits around, bash them together, thus creating the always sought-after spaceship. Or whatever. Hence, kit bashing. In our world of miniatures, this can translate into something as simple as a head swap, to the creation of previously unthought of species. Now, as in the past, it's a tool for those that have an altering state of mind, but still reside within the confines of already existing bits. There are scratch builds, of course, even in our hobby. It's called sculpting. I mean, you can sculpt and bash together an entirely unique army, and there are some awesome ones around. But I'm a bit more conservative, I guess. Mainly just buying pre-sculpted miniatures. So why the kit bash? I've done a few videos on the subject in the past, we'll do more in the future, but most of the time I've altered my miniatures to fit my own visual ideas. This is the power of the kit bash. It lets me create something original without actually having to learn how to sculpt. These orcs, for example, I just thought they were not showing enough skin. And the orc, in my head, well, doesn't cover itself totally in armor. And when they do, it should be more spiky. For my army, I wanted a more diverse cast, a female leadership, resulting in some simple head swaps. My more recent Stormcast uh, kit bash was more based on a story. I wanted cell swords, rogues, and the original sculpt was just not doing that. But this time, I had a different dilemma. I guess at some point in every wargamer's life, tactics come along and give you a long, alluring stare. It's suggesting eyes saying, you could change things around a little bit and then maybe win a game. Just cross over this fine, hardly visible line in the sand and taste the sweetness of victory. Previously, the miniatures purchased for my army have been dictated by visual aspects. I buy what I think looks nice. Now, for the first time, I've bought a miniature that I really don't like the look of. Personal opinions, of course. A purchase based on stats and numbers on papers, not because it visually would fit into my life or into the idea of my Stormcast Ninja Rangers. So instead of having to live with an eternal cringe, I decided to kitbash this Lord Castellant into something, well, less radiant and a little more, if not ninja, than at least rogue samurai. Attempting a, for me, quite advanced kitbash, something more than the mere head swap, I figured it would be a good idea to have a look at the existing bits and how they fit together to avoid the cutting off of future essential bits. And of course, other bits to bash with are required. By now I have amassed quite a lot of spare parts for Stormcast and have some other kits lying around for situations like this. If you are embarking on your very first kit bash, I can recommend checking out my Orc kit bash video. There I talk a little bit more in depth thoughts on amassing my first kit bashing bits. Now the first thing I definitely knew I wanted to do was swap out what's going on with the hands. I'm not too fond of the lamp thing. Like, what, what is this fellow doing? Did he drop his midnight snack on the ground trying to find it in the dark? Hey, there's a war going on, have you noticed? I wanted the lamp up on the staff and then a bit more of a threatening weapon pose preferably with another weapon, preferably a really big hammer. My kit bash process is not logical and straightforward. I decide to start, do the first step and then see what goes. Most of the time one step leads to the other, but sometimes a plan needs to be put on pause because of drying glue. 
And sometimes I chop something off that I shouldn't have and spend quite the time just trying to fix that. But I do think that just going for it is a good approach. The placing of one bit can very much change what I want to do with the next. And this is all stuff that I could never really plan for. Kit bashing like this, in my opinion, can be really handy for us wargamers. I figure it's all sort of a loop. If I like a mini, I tend to enjoy painting it. So then I enjoy what it looks like on the table, and independent of whatever the dice gods decide, if I like what it looks like on the table, well, then maybe I care more of what happens on the table. Maybe actually playing a better quote-unquote game. A lot of maybes, but if I don't like the look of a mini, I mean, just getting past the painting stage is a pain. It's kind of interesting, really. I mean, in theory, I could play these games with pretty much anything of similar size. I could do Roman warriors and say that they are stormcast stuck in an unfortunate dimensional loop, permitted divis cetera, but I don't. I mean, I could have just gotten a miniature that I like and say it's a Lord Castellant that dropped its torch while looking for its snack, but I don't. I want to sort of play by the book, but at the same time maybe bend the book just a little, not so much crossing the line in the sand, but balancing along it. Now, personally, I prefer using plastic cement when assembling miniatures. This goes for kit bashing as well. It does prolong the building process because of drying times, but I like the resulting sturdiness and the fact that I can strip the mini if I want without it falling to bits. I also, when deemed necessary, uh, pin bits into place. Essentially drilling a hole in the, in the two bits that are to be joined, then using a bit of metal wire or paperclip to act as reinforcement. Strengthening the joint, but also resulting in an easier, non-slippery uh, glue process. On this kit bash, I used this pin thing on everything I did to the thin shafts. The attaching of lamp and subsequently very large hammer. Sometimes during a build, gaps can be of an issue. If I can get away with it, I try to use sprue goo to fill these gaps. Sprue goo is essentially sprue melted down with plastic cement. And I often use it to fill gaps during normal miniature assembly. When dry, it's as sandable as the original uh, miniature. If this is not an option, I go for green stuff. Nothing I needed this time around, but green stuff is great if the gap is large or actually needs to be filled with something that can then be sculpted. To get this miniature to rhyme a bit with my uh, ruffian cell swords, also in the army, I used the same hooded style head from Cromlech. These heads are resin sculpts and thus I used regular super glue. Uh, if it would have been a metallic piece, I would have done the same. By means of kit bashing, I can in more or less subtle ways create my very own army. I can pretty much buy any miniature and make it not only fit into my army theme, but also make it my own giving me an extra creative outlet, a sense of individuality and unique vibes, resulting in a more enjoyable painting experience, and in the end, a more exciting gaming experience. Kit bashing is not only fun in itself, the trickle-down effect is strong, saving my war games from the shame of soldiers stalking the battlefield in search for their lost snack.